Okay, so here we're going to talk really briefly about the composition of the atmosphere. When we talk about the concentration of a gas, it doesn't really make sense to, turn, to talk in terms of mass per volume because, as you know, gases are compressible, so volumes can change. So instead we use something called a mixing ratio, and that's the number or percentage of, to of the total air molecules present that is the gas that you're interested in. Here's an example. We've got atmospheric carbon dioxide shown here as a percentage. 0.039% uh, of the atmosphere, and we can turn that into the number of molecules of carbon dioxide um, of a million molecules of air by dividing by 100 and then multiplying that proportion times a million, and then that tells us that there are 390 carbon dioxide molecules for every million air molecules, or 390 parts per million, which is which are the units we're used to thinking about when we think about how much carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere. So this figure here is showing you uh, the composition of the atmosphere. The vast majority of it is made up of nitrogen, 78%, and oxygen, 21%. This remaining little sliver right here uh, is the, the other stuff that we're interested in. Argon, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide. So nitrogen and oxygen make up 98% of the atmosphere and absorb essentially no infrared radiation. They are not greenhouse gases. So the gases, carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide, and a few others make up less than 1% of the atmosphere, but they are the greenhouse gases. They're the ones that allow us to live on, on Earth comfortably by giving us a greenhouse effect. And as we add more of them to the atmosphere, they're also accounting for um, global warming figure that you've probably seen something like before. Uh, the red line is showing you carbon dioxide increasing over time um, as we put more of it into the atmosphere. But it's not the only thing increasing over time. We've also got methane shown here in blue in parts per billion and nitrous oxide shown here in black in parts per billion um, also increasing over time, largely because of things that we are doing. So water vapor is another really important component of the atmosphere. Um, it varies from less than 1% of the atmosphere to 4%. It varies spatially and temporally over space and time. So why might this be the case? This figure can kind of give you an idea of why that might be. Uh, the purple up, up here at the poles, uh, up here and then down below in the south, are showing you uh, areas that are have essentially no water vapor, zero or very little water vapor in the in the air, and as you move towards the warmer equator, you end up with more like four or five percent of the atmosphere being water vapor. So as the air gets warmer, you get more water in the atmosphere. So the idea or the concept that we use to talk about this is saturated vapor pressure. So if you have water in a closed container, it will evaporate until it hits an equilibrium. So no more water vapor goes into the air at equilibrium. Uh, and at this point, the air is said to be saturated. So for a fixed volume and amount, how will saturated vapor pressure change with temperature as it increases? Would you expect vapor pressure to increase, decrease, or stay the same? So you can think about that for a moment. So this figure is just showing you how it changes. Um, the y-axis here got a little bit funny, but this is saturated vapor pressure on the y-axis. So you can see as you increase temperature along the x-axis, you've got increasing saturated vapor pressure. So why do we care about this? Uh, one reason that we care is that water is also a greenhouse gas. So as we warm up the atmosphere by putting more carbon dioxide or methane into it, well, that warms up the atmosphere a little bit. And then the atmosphere is able to hold more water so that's a greenhouse gas as well, so it traps even more heat, making it even warmer. So this is a really important uh, feedback um, that, or an amplification of greenhouse or global warming. So the amount of water vapor in the air is described by relative humidity. So this is the amount of moisture in the air compared to the amount of moisture that the air can actually hold at a given temperature. And we, we call this relative humidity, and we often talk about, instead of vapor pressure, we talk about vapor density, which is the mass of water per given volume of air. So in this case, we've got actual vapor density, how much is actually in the air, divided by the saturation vapor density, and multiply that by 100. So this is something you hear a lot in the weather. 
um, humidity is 98% and you know that that's almost the total amount of, of water that the air can hold and you know that if it's warm, uh, you're going to be pretty uncomfortable. So just to sum up, the atmosphere is mostly nitrogen and oxygen. There are not greenhouse gases and less than 1% is made up by these greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide. And these are the ones that account for the greenhouse effect, keeping us comfortable, but also global warming, perhaps making us a little too warm. Water vapor content increases with temperature. This is important because it amplifies the greenhouse effect or, in the, or global warming. And relative humidity is what we use to describe how much water is actually in the atmosphere at a given time and place. And that's pretty much it. And thanks for watching.